Okay, good morning everybody. Happy Thursday. One more day till the end of the week. Uh, and it keeps us to the weekend. It keeps us in count of the days because sometimes it's hard to keep track. So, before we get in uh, into today's lessons, I want to send you out a little announcement and share an app with you. At night tonight, we are having some of the clearest skies that we have had in a long time. So, you're able to see into space clearer than you would be normally. So tonight, this is a great excuse to stay up late and give your parents a genuine reason why you would like to be up late. If you go on to the App Store and download the Star Tracker Light Live app, it will help you identify different constellations in the sky and then you'll be able to see all the different star constellations up there. It does it in a virtual reality or an augmented reality uh, way. Now there are loads of satellites passing by at the minute. We saw 12 last night, 12 satellites. So there are loads of satellites, there are loads of shooting stars. Now is the time to get your out, self outdoors and try and spot some of these things. And that little app is a great way of helping you find them. Venus is clearly on display and you will spot it. It looks like the brightest star in the sky, but it is actually uh, the planet Venus. So tonight, mum, dad, please let me stay up late. I want to do some star spotting, some stargazing, please. Mr. Hayes says so. And then have a look and see what you can find. Okay, so we're going to jump into our work. It is squares up first. Okay, good morning my squares. Now squares, let's take a look. Yesterday we were looking at composite shapes and working out the perimeter of those composite shapes. Some of the shapes had missing sides. We're going back to simple shapes at the minute and using and calculating perimeter using a word formula. So we're going to come up with two quick ways of working out the perimeter of simple shapes using a word formula. So here we have our shape, we have a that's right, this is a rectangle, and one length is six centimeters and the other length is five centimeters. Now, remember from yesterday that the perimeter is the total length around the outside of a shape. Okay, so make sure you're clear in your vocabulary, don't get it confused with anything else. To work out the area, of, there we go, I've just got it confused with it, perimeter and area. To work out the perimeter of the shape, we go six plus five gives us 11, plus six, because opposite is the same size, is 17, plus five is 22. Now, there are quicker ways to do this. Let's have a look at one of the word formulas down here. This side is six, plus five. Now we know that there are two remaining sides, and because this is a rectangle, those sides are going to be even to the sides that are opposite. So we can do six plus five gives us 11, times two gives us 22 centimeters because we know we're just doubling the other sides of this shape. So whenever we have worked out the total perimeter of these two, we double it to work out the total perimeter overall. Okay, so that is one way you could look at it. And the second way, again, we know there are two of these lengths. So what we do is six times two to account for both of them. Then we look at the five and we know there are two of those as well. So it is five times two, six times two is 12, five times two is 10, add those together, we get 22. So this is a little quick word formula that you can use to work out the perimeter of some simple shapes. You can also use it to work out the perimeter of some compound shapes if you split those shapes back up into their original shapes before they were put together. Squares, we're gonna put this into practice. Good luck. Squares, I should also mention that there is a topic ass assessment that you can complete. Topic assessment number 10 in your booklet if you have it, okay? So topic assessment number 10 will sum up this little topic that we've just been working on. Okay, see you all tomorrow for some more numeracy. Good morning, Triangles. Triangles, we have finished our topic on weight and we're now starting a new topic looking at, whoops, up here, decimals and we're looking at hundredths, okay? How we write hundredths, what hundredths are and how we can look at them on squares, number squares and on number lines. So we're gonna introduce how we write these down, the decimal notation for hundredths. Okay, let's jump in. So I have a large hundred square here. There are 100 squares because it's 10 by 10. 10 times 10 is 100. On this row then, or on this column, sorry, we have 10 colored in and another seven. 
So out of the 100 squares that I have here, I have 17 of them colored in. Okay, so there's 17 squares colored in. Another way of representing that is 17 out of 100. Because there are 100 squares and I have 17 written down here. And a way of writing that as a decimal is 0 0.17. Okay, 0 0.17. And let's see what that means. So, <clears throat> that is a whole thing. And out of the whole thing, I have zero whole things coloured in. The whole square is not coloured in. It's divided up into lots of little parts. Hundreds, in fact. It's divided up into hundreds. And I have 17 of them. So how we can set is I have got zero units and 17 hundredths. Zero units because that unit, the whole large square, is not coloured in. So I have zero of them. But I do have 17 hundredths coloured in. So there are 100 altogether and I've coloured 17. So we say zero units and 17 hundredths. Another way of saying what's written down here is 0 0.17. So that's zero, that's known as point, not full stop. So 0 0.17, you can also say it like that. And the point, what it does is it separates the units from the fraction. So the units are the whole things which means the whole square and we have none of those colored in and this is the fraction part the way that that one thing is split into a hundred parts that's the fractions it would be split into and we only have 17 of them colored in so the decimal point separates the units from the fraction so let's have a look at a few more how would we read these you can pause the video and give me your answers, but I will continue to say them. But you pause them and uh, you have a go at them as well. So here we've got 33 over 100 could be read as zero units and 33 hundredths. Another way of reading this one would be 0 0.33. Okay, this one, we have 70 over 100 or zero units, 70 hundredths. Okay, and that is another way you can write that one down. You can or can choose to leave out the zero after the seven because you may read it as 0 0.7, 0 0.7. You wouldn't say 0 0.70, 0 0.7. Down here we have six over 100 or six of the 100 squares are shaded in. You could say zero units and six hundredths. Okay, it's a new way of talking, a new way of using our vocabulary to describe what we see. You could say six hundredths, or you could say 0 0.06. Now, here I have a number line, and that my number line does not begin at zero, it begins at 0 0.10. 0 0.1, and it goes up to 0 0.20 or 0 0.2. Now, if that is 0 0.1, and that is 0 0.2, what is the halfway mark? Hopefully, you would know that the halfway mark is 0 0.15. Okay, 0 0.15. Now that we know the halfway mark, we can put in all these other intervals. So this would be 0 0.11, 0 0.12, and so on as we work our way up. to the end of this short number line. Now, if that is 0 0.2, what would the next interval on this number line be as we move forward? Hopefully you have answered 0 0.21. Now, as you can see from my number line, each of these little intervals represent hundredths, just like they did on the hundred square. This is one little step at a time and it represents it in hundreds. So when reading the number line, you would read it just like you did previously and say the answers just like you did previously up here. You could say 0 0.11 hundredths or you could say 0 0.11. You could say 0 0.21 hundredths or you could say 0 0.21. Squares, we are going, or sorry, triangles, we are going to have a go at using this language and trying to understand hundred squares and number lines using hundredths today as well. Now, in your work, there is a hundred square. Uh, I'm going to 
include it as a picture, but if you can get your hands or 100 square, or if you want to draw them out in your book, that will give you practice at representing hundreds in 100 square. So that bit you're going to have to try and become creative with if you have no printer at home. The textbook work, as always, will give you a little bit of practice on using number squares and number lines and writing the decimal notation or writing the decimals like this. And do have a go at saying it out. The language is super important today. So do have a go at reading these and saying them in both ways that we've looked at today. Triangles, that is you. Good luck. Okay, super circles. Before we begin a brand new topic, this is the last day of some subtraction. Practice. So, we're going to be looking at subtraction patterns today and spotting patterns in our work. For example, you can see that we have a table up here and we're subtracting 1 from this number, then 10 from this number, 100 from this number, and 1000 from this number. So the pattern is increasing in size, but you should notice something that happens with the numbers once you complete this. Okay? Do this again for these numbers. So take this number and subtract 1, subtract 10, subtract 100, subtract 1000, and so on for these until you see an easy pattern starting to appear. So when you get sums that are quick and easy and you can do in your head by taking away 1, 10, 100, and 1000, you will have had practice at seeing what happens with numbers and calculations like that. Down here it's very similar except we're going for 5000. Also take a look now, what have we taken away to go from 463 to end up on 63? Have a look at the patterns that are happening in this table. What did we do to get from 63 to get to 3 and then from 3 to 0? Have a look at the patterns and see if you can work out what's going on and then do the same again for each of these numbers. And then finally, your work today, starting with 5,000 each time, complete these tables. So 5,000 take away 2, 20, 200, 2,000. So it's 5,000 take away 20, 5,000 take away 200, 5,000 take away 2,000. And continue the patterns and see what is happening in these div, uh, subtraction sums. See if you can spot these patterns each time. <clears throat> and then finally, there is a bit of a challenge down here if you want to continue and have a go at this part. It says continue this pattern as far as you can. So you can see we have a leapfrog technique where we're starting at 10,000. We're taking away 900. And 99 to give us 9001. We're taking away 999 to give us boom boom. You work out the new pattern and continue that as far as you can. This may look tricky, but you will spot a pattern. And when you spot a pattern, it becomes much, much easier to continue that pattern on. Circles, that is you. Like I say, this is the last of our subtraction practice for now before we move on to our new topic on Monday. It'll be problem solving tomorrow. But that is it. Okay, today's literacy task. Now, I've got a little YouTube video clip for you today to watch five minutes long. And we're going to use today's session as a planning session to actually write our story tomorrow. <clears throat> It'll be a little narrative text that you'll have a go at tomorrow. This is based on the story called Taking Flight and after being dropped off with his boring old grandpa, one little boy called Tony's dismay is turned into a thrilling adventure um, when his dad drops him off for the day as he goes off to work. He thinks it's going to be a boring day ahead but his grandpa turns it into a really exciting and fun day. The little video clip is excellent and I'm sure we can all relate. We've had days where we've used our imagination to turn something boring into something really fun watch the video and then I've included a little sheet called a dad waiver. Now a dad waiver is a sheet to help you plan out the story. The dad waiver stands for description, action, dialogue, where, adverb, verb, estimation of time, rhetorical questions, similes or metaphors. Now we have covered similes, metaphors and all this other stuff in class already so use this sheet to help you plan out your story. Write about the actions that take place some little descriptions, any dialogue that took place or you would want to include. This planning sheet is for you to use to help you create and write a better story. So think about how best you can use the dad waiver to create your story. 
Today it is about filling in the dad waiver sheet and having a good plan and a good idea of what you want to go into your narrative text when it is your turn to write. So watch the video, think about the dad waiver, think about the important events that happen in the story, think about the language you want to use if you're going to retell the story in first person like you are there. What are your feelings? What are your experiences? What is happening if you are that little boy? So use the planning sheet to help you consider those questions. Okay, watch the video, enjoy the dad waivers and get ready to write tomorrow. Okay, and it's topic challenge time here. You guys are going to love me today because you will have to tell your mum, your dad, or whoever's at home to go and get you some jelly babies. Okay, so you'll need jelly babies and you will need spaghetti. I want you to build me the strongest, highest tar possible using one pack of jelly babies and spaghetti. How high can you get it without falling apart? and remaining steady. So, mum, dad, I need jelly babies to do my work today. Okay, go and get a packet of jelly babies. Use the spaghetti that you have in your cupboards and create me a high tar. You can see the little um, clip that I have here or the little sheet that I have for you to give you an example. Good luck with this challenge. And of course, you get to eat the jelly babies once it is over. Radio, that is us for today. Now, go outside once you have your work done. Soak up that sunshine because one thing that's guaranteed is it is not going to be here forever. Okay, so make sure you head outside, grab some sun and have some fun. We will see you all tomorrow. Next up, it is that awesome dad joke.